That nigga wasn't playing around with me like that. Yeah, you gonna play around because I'm over here. But Zach, don't fuck with me, nigga. Curvy attitude. <laughs> you gonna put some respect on unreal. my name, my nigga. When when my name is mentioned, dog, shun yourself. Oh, nigga. Oh, shit. I like that. I did like it, too. I like Pause that for shit. Second. Pause it for a second. Zach, separate yourself from you being the whole nigga that's being told to shut up in the conversation. Just for one second. That's just okay. Can I also back. separate myself from the guy out in the backyard when, after the show, Jimmy was told me how smart and funny my comedy was and how he wanted to do my show? <laughs> you should have him on your show. Weren't you going to have him on, uh, what was the movie? The show where people talk over movies? Yeah, he's perfect. <laughs> 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 Listen, Jimmy, I don't know what the fuck your problem is, but you know where I am every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, right here, and I will be here to watch you fight Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Hey yo! Hey yo! Get the fuck out of here! Oh my fucking god! These motherfuckers over at Gas Digital, man. All right, guys. There's a lot of merit and a lot of facts of the shit that Zach said, but before we even get into all that, I want to introduce a. A very, very good friend of mine. Fuck that. He's my little brother. I love him to death. Um, he, To be perfectly honest, y'all, he's the nigga that put, put me in the podcasting game. He helped me, you know, sift through all these fuckers and come up with uh, G Money and Black Mike, a.k.a. Mike the Producer, Producer Mike. Uh, you guys know him from Legions of Skank. You guys... Know him from the Real Ass Dude podcast. You know him from being the helm over at Gas Digital. And also, he's a fucking MMA champion. Um, without the, You can't deny that, all right? So Undefeated. without further ado, please, ladies and gentlemen, for the one and only, my little brother, Louis J. Gomez. Jim, thank you for having me, my brother. You already, man. Thank I love it, man. Thank you for it. putting me in the game, man. Yeah, you, uh, you know, I didn't do anything. Me and you, were friends. So, you know, I've uh, I've consulted on podcasts. I've talked shit to, you know, people have paid me and my partner, Ralph, to just literally to do what we did with you, which is just give you some advice, show you some direction. Because I've made so many mistakes in the podcast game. You're just going to sit there and make all the same bullshit mistakes I made. So I just cut out like a year of bullshit for you. That was all I did. I, I literally, <laughs> I saved you a year of horse shit and bad audio and bad... <laughs> You, and you did it the right way, and you took your time, and I, I commend what you and these white guys have done. Um, they put in, they really, I, you guys are incredible, dude. The, everything from the the branding with the logos, and uh, I was saying before, it's like, I don't want to wear a guy's face on my shirt. That's that's gay as shit. Even when I watch guys wear sports jerseys, like a guy that has another man's <laughs> name on his back, and I'm like, doggy, you're like, he's the man, and you're just saying yes. <laughs> Yes, he's the man, and I'm willing to let him be the man, so much so that I'm willing to advertise it to women that I fuck and <laughs> my, my children. And it's crazy to me Chill, when bro. I watch men wear jerseys and team jerseys on their back. It's crazy. But that logo would not make me feel gay if I had it on a hat or a T-shirt. That's how good it is. That yeah. little monogram, just that you could do it in one color. It's beautiful, man. It's very nice. Uh, uh, you know, um, without a doubt, I just want to shout out um, our... Um, Artist, uh, fucking Callie from Hood Goody, uh, she, she's got a clothing line um, that's really taking off and really popping. You know, my my brother Al, um, Big Al over at motherfucking Grand Hustle Clothing, you know, he's he's helping her with that movement. But she's a sister that I met on a, um, the PATH train one day going out to Jersey City, and um, she opened up her laptop, saw a whole bunch of shit in there. Wow. And you know, I'm I'm a nigga that'll just open up a conversation with the with the weirdest people. I don't care. And she and I hit it off, and next thing I know, this You're was happening. sucking your dick. Nah, not at Damn. all, not at all. Um, she she just really believed in what was going on, and. She, I asked her for some logos, and she came up with those fucking logos, man. Right. She's a beast. They're incredible. They're really good. She's very talented, and it's just, it's good, man. You're, it's all coming together. 
your podcast is, um, you know, if you kind of look at the branding and everything, there's a, it seems like there's a brand there already. You know what I'm saying? You have people that care about us. So I commend you guys. You guys are fucking killing it, man. They really are, man. I didn't, I'm just saying I didn't really do shit. All I did was, you know, we sat down and had a couple conversations and I gave you some advice on some nah, things that I would do nah, Lewis, if I was starting you, over. You, you, nah, bro, you, you, you don't understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, first and foremost, when G. Dot and I first came home, okay, and yeah, this was y'all wave. This was the shit y'all niggas was doing. Um, you know, after G. Dot and I did the joint, you know, G. Dot was like, yo, we should do something like that. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I wasn't ready at the time. I, I, I didn't know what the fuck it really was. I still don't know, really know what the fuck it is. You right. know, I'm still figuring this shit out, which is going to uh, segue into what, you know, what we're here to talk about and shit like that. Um, but you d- you did have a lot to do with what the fuck is going on here at Fire in the Hole because those appearances on Legions of Skank kind of reminded me of my hot 97 days and made me want to get back into radio. And I didn't understand how real this podcasting shit is until we actually jumped, jumped, jumped into it, yeah. like myself. Like you and Big J, my, the homie Dave, um, you know, yeah, yeah, I knew what this wave was. I still, I'm still figuring it out. Like, I want to get to um, we opened up the episode with the homie uh, Zach, right? Now, you, yeah, I used this. You when we when we got on the phone when I when after you finally reached out to me after you realized I was really upset about everything and you you called Zach a sniper and. Yeah. I I don't understand that talk or none of that shit. I, I, You're I like, oh shit, he's got a gun. Like, oh no. boy, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> nah, it wasn't like it was just more like I don't understand. I don't listen to podcasts, right? Okay, I don't understand the dynamics of it. You see, as everyone else see, I don't have a, a co-host or. Nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I, The reason why I don't have a co-host is because when I first came into the game, like where I was really shaken, um, I was with Kevin Brennan. Mm-hmm. And he was coming off of a co-host, this whole co-host problem where, you know, Lenny Marcus and all of these guys, they, it was all these issues. And I didn't want to be a part of that. I didn't want... And I didn't want whack niggas saying whack shit in between my serious stories or whatever it was. And um, I I didn't know what Zach's real purpose was. Now I get it. When you said he's a sniper and then someone else explained to me that's what Dave Smith does on fucking... Skanks. Skanks. Yeah. He's a sniper. So you see now... This you you learn something new every day. See, yeah. I I know I everyone think think it's like oh shit that nigga Jimmy can't take a joke. Nah, it's not even a joke when you when niggas you don't know what what it is. I don't I don't get it. I didn't get it. And knowing that that this is Zach's style and his this is his humor. Yeah, you understand. I have to respect that. It's like certain motherfuckers for a basketball team is the three point specialist. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying. Like, so I'm not I'm not there to dictate or control anyone's funny. You understand? What, right. And and what Zach said um, about when after the podcast was over, how I approached them and yeah, said yeah. that I did say that. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. I did say that because I really do think he he's funny. Yeah, and in his own merit, you know well, what Zach, I'm saying. Zach is truthfully one of the funniest writers. Period in the world. I, I work with a lot of writers, and when it comes down to like roast writing or punching up a script, things like that, that's where he he's a, he's a genius. His mind works in a different level, and you'll see he'll sit back and I say one thousand times the words he says on a podcast, but anytime he speaks, it's very economical. It's going to be funny. It's just snipes, boom, I, and he gets the room laughing. And then we reset, we move on to the next thing. But he half the podcast is him trashing me and calling me on my shit. So I'll be saying something, and then he'll be like, boom, and he'll trash me and. It's sort of the thing. So here's the reality, right? When you go on a podcast, this is the advice that I would give you. I would go, you should listen to the show. You should know what you're going into. Because sometimes you go into an environment, you're like, oh, shit, I wasn't really, I wasn't prepared for that. It's almost like going on like a political show where you're like, you didn't realize you're going on a political show. And they're talking about politics and you're trying to like change the subject. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
excuse me. I'm sorry. This shit hitting right here, Lou. I don't know what this is, but um, I poisoned it. Now, now I can take Jimmy. <laughs> I bet you. Um, but I, you, you know why I don't listen to podcasts? And I'm gonna be honest with you. The reason why I don't listen to podcasts is because every time I touch the mic on on any podcast or on any podcast in the situation. I want to be fresh, and I want to be me. I don't want to be influenced in no yeah. way, form, or fashion. So, I mean, most comics, or a lot of good comics, won't watch other stand-ups. So, I, I, but I don't want to, but here's the thing. I got to come to terms with the fact that I'm still a student in this, and I'm still learning, you know, but I was really, it wasn't really Zach that bothered me. I'm sorry, Lewis. I, I just want to... Because Zach is funny. And I did say I would come on and do his fucking show because I would want to I would want to mingle with him. He's he he he, he, he works. Okay. So that's I, also the reality is because you, you made a statement there. And there is something about this. It's it's kind of an interesting point you made there. Um you said there's truth in when when people are whatever they're joking about on stage or on a podcast or whatever, there's truth to it. And playing and, there is truth, Shakespeare. Not of course. Me. Now, um, I think that you're right. There's something about that. But Zach's not racist. Zach's a straight up like SJW, like liberal feminist. Like when you, if you were to talk to him about on a real, on real issues about, about, you know, whatever it is about race, sex, uh, you, he gets, people get angry at Zach on my show. Cause my fans are fucking, they don't really care about politics. And anytime we talk about politics, Zach will always lean toward the left. Um, and, they get annoyed with him because, you know, it's something with Mike Cannon, the other kid that was on the, the show as well, um, because that's sort of like the way he thinks. So when you're like, oh, this kid's racist and there's, you know, there's, tr- it's, that's not the truth in what he's saying. Maybe there's something there. Maybe there's something about society and you know, the way that white people are comfortable joking about black people or whatever else. But to say indefinitely that he's racist because he yeah, makes a joke I, like that. I, 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 I have to recant that, man, because, you know, here's the thing. I was in, in the eye of my anger. Yeah. And I'm I I I'm, I'm just like at this point, everybody dead. I yeah. see red, everybody <laughs> dead. I'm gonna go mash the whole crew out. I you know it. what I'm I saying? Like And I get that. I appreciate and, and you being honest like I, that. I gotta be honest because this is what this show is built off yeah. of. Honesty here. But another thing this show is built off of is not Pushing hate in any way, form, or fashion, right. you know, because well, that was you, my thing. I was, I was like Jimmy. I was like the the angle here is like, oh, that Shannon and Zach are racist. It's like, well, what if real people that feel that? What if some fucking blogger bitch is like, oh, this black guy is saying that this white person is racist when the that's just not even the truth of any of it. And you're not on their side. Those yeah. bitches will be against you yeah. and the shit you say. You know what I'm saying? So it's all this sort of like. The online no, world, it yeah, just gets no, very mixed up. And that's why I called you. I was like, Jimmy, Shannon's not right. What are we doing here? Shannon? And then immediately. But then I found out she never fucked a black guy. I was like, Shannon might be a little racist. No, 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 <laughs> no. Yo, no. Nah, her, her, her reputation is impeccable in the motherfucking industry, yeah, dog. she's dope, yeah. Like, everybody that I called. So, for you motherfuckers that don't know that missed the, the whole thing, uh, dude, because we have to address this, okay? Uh, Shannon, I did... I knew nothing of her or about her until I went to the Real Ass Dude podcast, okay, at Gas Digital. And when we met, we hit it off. She's super dope. You know what I mean? Talk to, talk to me about uh, one of her exes, um, so forth and so on, whatever. Um, so I, I just felt when that shit happened... It was all the way left because I don't listen to the Real Ass Dude podcast, yeah. Lou. You're the real ass dude. Yeah. I know you. I don't need to listen. But the, I to- I pull the strings there. So and this is also what I said to you, which is like, you can't blame these guys for like that's my type of humor. So if somebody makes a joke like that on my show, they know I'm sort of pushing people in that direction, and I push the boundaries. And people say shit all, all the time on this show. Like, dude, I shouldn't have said that on your show. Fuck. Did I say something dumb that I'm gonna get in trouble for? And I'm like, no, shut up. Most of the time, people sit there. And Legion of Skanks, it's the same thing. We're more extreme. And you, on that now, show. see, when I go to Legions of Skank. I know it's it's no holds bars there, you yeah, know, yeah. I because I've been there before. Of course, and, you know, and like and coming out of jail. See, people think that I'm homophobic. No, dog, it's a it's a blatant disrespect to their community to tell someone outside of their community to suck your dick. 
Oh. You're, you're, yeah, you're, a good gay guy. They, no, they would love a straight guy to suck their dick. No, but you know, yeah, well, probably they would. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I would love yeah, a lesbian yeah. if I could get a dyke lesbian to come and suck my dick but in front of her girlfriend. Like, look at this shit. This is how much she wanted my dick. You fucking. But it's it's a derogatory statement to make to another man to say that. It's actually taking a jab. Dougie, it's you can't look. look I I grew up. But, I'm, it's weird because I live. I grew up. In poverty, I grew up in a, and also yes, both but you white trash and and in a more hood environment right. with Hispanic and black kids. Yes, and it's just the way we were raised. I've I, for me, I I moved I moved into a different world in high school. I started playing in a band. You know what the fucks yeah. up? You, you went to, you went on fucking uh, Warp Tour yeah, and on Taste of Chaos. And, you know how those I motherfuckers played, joke. I played crazy games like gay chicken and <laughs> yes, shit like that. Son, yes, I, I know, I know. I get that culture. Yeah. I get that it's culture. It's just a different thing. So but, it's the way. And I, I don't fault if I meet somebody that is from the hood. Typically, I don't fuck around and make those type of jokes because it's not going to go. Or I, I forget just the hood. Anybody like Michael Bisping, right? He's I do a podcast with him. He's former UFC middleweight champion. There's certain shit I'm just not going to say to him, and certain shit I'm not going to joke about with him because more than anything else, I'm doing a broadcast, and it's not going to get the best out of him. Pissing him off isn't going to get the best out of him. Pissing me off gets the best out of me. Mm. When people piss me off on a podcast and I'm in a bad mood or something, where it goes, it usually ends up being pretty funny, and it's just sort of we've learned how to use my temperament on these shows in a way. You have a similar thing where it's like when you're angry, it's fucking entertaining as fuck. But I, I, it can I, get crazy. That too, you know. And yeah. but uh, over uh, the, the whole thing is like in jail. That culture is unacceptable. And the hood, you know that 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 culture is unacceptable. Yeah. It's foreign to us. But I've 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 grind. I've went outside of my comfort zone. I, I've you, you understand? We we've talked about this. I've interacted with different cultures and where this is, you know, this is open filled and stuff like that. But then, well, here's, here's the thing, the Jimmy. Thing. I know you. But, if there was a gay guy here right now, you'd chill and smoke a blunt with him. It wouldn't be. It no, wouldn't be. But here's the thing. But I here's you the, I don't know the way you reacted. No you're like, no, no. Here's the <laughs> no. It's a fact. Here's the thing. But <laughs> you tell at me, the end tell of me the, not to hit the bump. Get your own blunt. We can chill. But no, I don't know what you're at the end of the day, it's it's. It's still a, a a situation where, dude, I have a platform, and I'm not going to utilize my platform to disrespect anyone that it's already hard for them. Mm -hmm. You understand? In, in their community, in their movement. So I, I don't want to antagonize it in any way, form, or fashion if we're not bringing any light to make their, their situations just so we can coexist. You don't have to like what they're doing. But, dude, it's a humanity thing at this point. You got to respect it. And I just think it's disrespectful to take shots at someone when you're taking shots at a community. I get what you're saying. You're saying, hey, you're below me. You'd suck a dick. That's what you're saying, ultimately. It was that, so that's why it's disrespectful uh, uh, to them. Uh, uh, I, 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 I don't am really I, know what I, the fuck you just said. I know, I I'm like not I sucking no dicks, no, You're not listening to me. No, no, no. Oh. I... <laughs> I think I, I just that's all I heard, nigga. I think I what I I think I extracted what you're saying. I think what you're saying is if I tell if I tell G Money to suck my dick, okay. And I'm I'm and I'm, and I'm a part of the alternative community. You're, 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 I would I would take offense guy. to that. Because I'm saying you're below me. You suck my dick, you're below me. Yes. You know, you, to you, you're to this gay guy over here saying, Oh, this is what a fuck somebody below me would do, which is suck my dick. And I just think that it's unfair. Like it's too much hate that's being promoted in the world, dog. Like talking about wild shit, like we could talk about wild shit all day, yeah. dog. Like I'm with that. But anything that we're doing to promote hate. I just I I want to counter that because first and foremost the the image that's painted of me yeah. in the industry okay they would just think that I would be more for that of course aspect. people think that I'm fucking that I'm homophobic and I'm hateful and I'm all this other shit none of that's true I just make dumb jokes so what happens is sometimes those dumb jokes get you into trouble and it pisses your friends off sometimes it pisses people off that don't know you you know what I'm saying but my friend. I pick up the phone and I call my boy. You know what I'm saying? People online, they there's no phone call, there's no relationship, there's no nothing. You know what I'm saying? So there's always a, you know, that for me, I sort of ignore anything else. You know what I'm saying? And I also feel like even with like the gay jokes or whatever else, look, you got to take the shot. You know what I'm saying? Some old it's that that's that Patrice O'Neill concept, which is just fucking great. Facts. Every joke comes from the same place, and if it's a good joke, a bad joke, it all starts with an idea, and you go, oh, let me take this chance. Now, the jokes that I like. 
go to the line, go to the edge where they can fail or they should fail. It's, it's a topic that make people fucking uncomfortable and that's what gets me going. And sometimes when you, when you take that chance, then you fail much harder than if you're fucking talking about going to a diner and I, you know, I had a fucking turkey sandwich. If that fails, who gives a fuck? It doesn't really matter. You know Yo, what I'm saying? And, but I do also want you to understand I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't want no one to be censored with their humor. I mean, if that's your humor, that's your thing. Of course. I'm just not going to participate in it right. and bring any light to it because right. I know whatever situation I'm in, I bring a light to. What, you understand what I'm saying? Let me ask you a question. What was the thing that pissed you off about hearing us talk about? What was the thing that really got you? What was the, the moment? The, the, I, the, off the rip, when you asked for my picture and... The motherfucker put the 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 monkey the donkey Kong donkey Kong. Pitch. You thought and it should have been Diddy Kong. And you got then the hat. to find out it wasn't Shannon after I was that lashing her on the internet for a whole fucking day. Mike Harrington, that bitch ass nigga, dog. Yeah. He called you, right? Yeah, he are you called. So, are you me. still mad at him? I, I, I listen. I'll call him right I, now. I, yo, homie, listen, listen. Shit, for I I, I feel I I'm. I forgive him, but homie, I feel some kind of way that you left that woman out there, dog. That's worse than the offense of making the, the dumb joke. Yeah, to me, to it's step like- step up and say, hey, hold it, wasn't, that. it wasn't me. And the, the thing that I loved, and I said this on the show, on the Real Life Podcast, the fact that Shannon didn't sell him out still. That's so crazy. That was some crazy shit. Because at, at, at first, hold on, I, I thought Mike is the person that pulls shit up. So when he did it, and I said to you, I don't even know if it registered with you when I said it. I was like, I don't think it was even Shannon that did that. Yeah. Or maybe you thought I was just trying to cover or whatever, whatever it was. I really thought, I was like, all right. And then when it got to the point where Shannon was defending herself on Twitter, I was like, oh shit, it was her that pulled it up. So I was like, all right, I didn't even bring that up again. Then after it's all said and done, after she spoke with you, she told me that it wasn't even her. And then I found out she never told you that. I was like, holy shit, Shannon. Shannon's Bro, ride or die. That's some fucking that's like. That's some real nigga <laughs> shit. Right. Any nigga that got her in his life. That's some crazy he shit. He's set. Yeah. He said that it was it's it's a <laughs> microcosm and it shows you the way that she thinks. You know what I'm saying? Yo, like, bro, now this is where my issue comes with Her the Harrington character. Yeah. Because Yo, dog. For two days, you publicly fucking outwardly trashing her. He just thinks he's in the clear. Yo, but homie, can I, can homie, I nah, at, at the end of the day, yo, protect our women, B. Yeah, I agree. Even protect if it wasn't you, women. that's what Bobby Hutch said. Bobby, like, our other producer, was like, even if it wasn't me, I would have just said, oh, I did it. And I would have said, hey, you know, just so dude, you know. Real nigga shit. Yeah. And, and, and for me to, for me to have the notion in my fucking head that she's the realest G in that motherfucking studio out of the rest of those niggas, that's, crazy. that's problematic. I agree. That's problematic. But Now we need me, to tear her to, down. To, to, no, to find out... That, yo, we can try to tear her down. It's not going to happen. But her fucking... The, her, the light and stature that she stands in the industry, dog, she's loved. Yeah, mother Shannon is the shit Shannon's the because shit. she's got a big heart and it's she's real honest. shit. That's why Shannon is honest. Shannon doesn't have the ability to lie. Wouldn't lie. She, you know, she's that's that, and that's why she didn't know shit when she started working with us. She didn't really know much about production. She was doing it, but it wasn't. And she cried her first day working with us. She was so overwhelmed. So she the, fucking she came out and fucking really so learned just, how to just imagine how she must have felt personally to hear this shit going on. Yeah. On on social media, that you know, social media crazy, dog. Well, she's also got a thin skin or a thick skin at this point because she uh, she works with us. She, but these people still, are monsters. I'm a monster. But still, I torture Shannon every, every three days a week now. But still, homie, she didn't really know me, yeah. and, and 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 dog, I, I, homie, all I know is that 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 man is wrong. Shannon's the G, and what really got me pissed off over the whole entire fucking interview over at the Real Ass Dude podcast is when you had, there was one guy that always, I got respect for Diego, him. Diego Lopez. Because he constantly. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt. He, uh, he, he's a martial artist mind, so that's why he speaks respectfully. And it it's a different. That resonated. Yeah. 
You said that we're I don't, martial artists. We yeah. understand. Well, I'm not a mar- I want people to realize that I'm not a martial uh, but, artist. But I've only taken a few months of martial arts training. I'm just very game, and I'm a monster, and I don't believe that any man. I think there's a game plan that I can come up with to beat any man in front of me. I want to tell you something. It's a crazy thing. I want to tell you something. That's a that's a crazy way to think. But yo, my nigga, (laughs) real nigga, real nigga, talk, real nigga, talk, and listen to me when I say this to you, little bro. Everybody got a plan until they get punched in the motherfucking face. Oh yeah, I know. And 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 everything go and uh, that plan is out the window. I Mm -hmm. promise you. This this is a fact. You ever be in your mind? Before the fight, yo, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit him over here. I'm gonna get that. And nigga, you get in the fight. Both y'all niggas look like two butchers named Barbara yeah. fighting in the club with sports bras on. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, I, I've been it in a bunch goes of, the way, I've the been way in a bunch look. of dumb street fights, and I, I've been in a one, one mixed martial arts fight ever. Yo. One fight when I, you know, and. I learned a lot from that fight, you know, and the only, like I said, it's not, it's not even about you. It's not about anybody. It wasn't about Ryan O'Neill, the guy that I fought. Cause the truth is I'm not, you're not a professional martial artist. I'm not a professional martial artist. There's no tape. There's no real way to know who could do what. Right. Yo, so I'm just, not, I'm, yo, Lewis, I, I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going, n- niggas is listening. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to keep it a hundred with you. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it's going to be no walk in the park with you. No, I don't think so. I don't Hell think you think no. that either. I, Jimmy, I don't, Hell I know, no. I know you don't think that, but the point I'm making is it's not about any of that. For me, it's about like, I, I'm, I'm a person who I set goals and I achieve goals and that's sort of something that I pride myself in. And the goal, if the goal is to beat you in a mixed martial arts competition, take the violence out of it, take the fight. People, people are scared of violence. People are scared of fighting, right? Step back from it. This is similar. If it, if it was a one-on-one basketball competition, right, me and you, you're probably better at basketball than me. You have the attributes to beat me in basketball. I'm not good at basketball. I don't know how to do basketball at all, right? I just said do basketball. That's how little I know about basketball. <laughs> But it's a physical game. Now, do I believe that I could sit down with a coach and come up with a game plan to beat you in a one-on-one basketball game? I think I could. I'm not saying that you couldn't do the same thing for me. Mm-hmm. And that's the same way that I look at the fight. There's a physical thing here that I have to do, and I have to beat you at this physical thing. And it's not, people are very, people are pussies. The problem is everyone that looks at this is a bitch, right? Everyone's going, oh, Jimmy's going to fucking kill you. Oh, Lewis is going to snap your yeah, neck. It's, they're pussy people, dude. They don't, they don't, they look at people that talk tough and they get into fights and they go like, oh, shit, I wouldn't want to fight that guy. This isn't about a fight. It's about a, a Having a, setting a goal, and the goal is to f- you know beat you at this physical activity, and I think I can do that. Maybe I'm wrong. The worst thing that happens you are is, you maybe are the worst you thing that happens abso- is you are absolutely wrong. The worst wrong. thing that happens is I'm wrong, and I love you, and that's that. We'll get drunk after the fucking fight. We'll smoke some weed, and that'll be that. We'll smoke some weed. Um. Oh yeah, we're not, you're not drinking, but uh, but if. But I think that I can do it. I, you know, I, I got to look my son in the eye. And, Yo, and, and I got to look my nephew in the eye, you know? And I, what the <laughs> fuck? Say, I knocked that, at your dad. <laughs> you, you know? Come on, James. <laughs> Come, Come on, on, let's go to Disney World. <laughs> your dad's eating through a straw. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I, the last thing I want, I, I, I want you to be doing is drinking Thanksgiving foods. Yes. Nobody wants to drink turkey. Uh, look, I, I, I believe me. And but here, go here can, can, can I, can I, can, can we just step away from the fight and of all course, that for yeah. a moment? Because we have a while. We should say that as well. This fight's not going to happen until the, probably the late summer, early fall. We got some time. So we, uh, uh, this is, we got some yeah. time. So then all the guys, calm down out there about the fight. All right. We'll, 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 this is all happening. And I, 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 I'm going to fuck Lewis up. I promise, guys. Even with his plan and all that shit. I promise. <laughs> but let's put that all to the side. And let me just explain Get to my little brother. Get the cameras over here. Ooh, Yo, I, ain't gonna, I, I, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, this this <laughs> motherfucker right I'm here. Right yeah, now. You, you got real. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Son. You ain't you ain't poster dog, Lewis Gomez. No, no I'm beefy. <laughs> okay. Um, but... What really got me upset about that joint, Lewis, is because y'all know I I didn't I didn't want to be in the fight with you. I, of in course, in the midst of all of that shit, I was thrown in the middle of it, 
and I know, like, I'm not the most popular comic and all of that stuff, but that I know was, that. Can I, can hold I, hold me, on, can yeah. I just finish my? Yeah, so sorry. you can, you know, I know that I'm not the most popular comic out there, and um, it, it's just like all. But what I saw was my friend, my little brother. You know, what I'm saying that that really had control over the situation, right. allowing some some whole nigga. To come in and, and really talk like he boss made and and the people they they lean into that shit like they like wait a second yeah and, it, and you, just because he made this notion right. that it can have some merit to it and instead of you being like no 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 wait a second yeah Jim well, to be will, fair I did kind of kind if you of listen so, I I, I, I should have been more clear you're yes, right yes that's I, all and I and I agree with that it was my job because I do control the environment they are my jokes they are my friends. Um, to, to make it more clear um, how this fight was set up, you know, and and the idea of this fight. It's not even set up yet. We got to figure it all out still, right? But, you know, the, the truth is you were somebody that we, we were talking about, poss- people that I could possibly fight, and you were the name that everyone, my friends, the people on Legion of Skanks, the fans, when we your name was brought up that everyone got most excited about. Um, that notion of, you know, famous, quote-unquote, um, all that was was... I, last year when I fought Ryan O'Neal, it was a guy who was relatively unknown. No, I know what y'all was saying. Yeah, yeah. I know, and, and and what he can bring to the joint and stuff like that. But nigga, the hood love me. Doggy, I, look, don't worry the, about look, that. The hood will come. I'm not, I'm not concerned. Listen to me. Me and you fight each other. Everyone in the fucking comedy community, <laughs> everyone that listens to every podcast, everyone ever will want to watch this. Believe me, there's no doubt about it. It's fucking psychotic. The That's thought of fact. it. Do my chick get, you know what my girlfriend said to me? Remember, you remember when uh, Rocky was going to fight? Uh, <laughs> you can't pardon. This bitch gave me a you can't win speech. <laughs> I wanted to spit in her face. She was like, I don't know, Jimmy. And I'm showing her pictures of you fat. And I was like scrolling through at it like, because your profile picture, you're a scumbag. He's got a, he's all jacked. He's with veins in his forearms in his profile picture. I'm like, no, 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 Jimmy Anderson, you got to catch Jimmy on a fucking bad day. It made me furious. You can't win? Fuck you, Kim. <laughs> is that the is that the joint when he went back to Chicago with Apollo? I don't know Detroit. if it was before Clubber Lang or before fucking... That, that's who you want to be, by the way. Lang. You're Clubber Lang to me. That's, that's what you are. Nah, I'm Drago. You got to... <laughs> Oh shit! Who's that? That's L Star. Pass me the split. I speak no, J. Yeah, yeah, no, I can't. It's fucking no, nah, man. But fuck. it, 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 no, you should have picked it up. You should have. No, no, it no. Up. He is, we're talking about a, a live show. It's a, a business conversation. Okay. Well, listen. Was that our blunt still? Yeah. This what? is uh, something coming oh, around. L Star. Um, I love L Star as the man. I I didn't like that Justin Silverman. I understand what y'all was doing, but just don't play with my name like that. I'm not, I'm Lewis. I'm not built for none of that shit, dog. I'm coming, I came into the podcasting world just to talk my shit. Yeah. You know, find my little thousand strong and and, and move along. I I don't, I don't want to bother nobody. I don't want to, I, I am not going to be no one's muse. I know. I get it, and you're right. You're right that I should. But at the same time, if we're going to do this, I guarantee you there's going to be somebody that makes some other fucking dumb joke that doesn't know you. No, and, I, I, and you I, have to, I, you no, have to go I'm like, right, they I, don't know you. Dude, some of this shit, some of this shit is, uh, is a go. Some of this shit is a go. I'm, I'm not, as long as they aren't being totally disrespectful, bro. Right. I, that's it. I don't give do you, a fuck. Do we have to go in five minutes because of the time I have to be downtown? Okay, I mean, we could probably, I, I, we could probably give it another ten. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Do, do your thing. Uh, my, my dudes, they just ready, man. My, we're no, a small, good. sufficient group, but we're, 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 we are like, you know, who we are in the podcast and world, fire in a hole. We're like the seal elite team. I was saying like seal. It's like our faces are yeah. fucked up. <laughs> But well, we fuck hot bitches, so what's up? Fire yeah, the yeah, hole. Yeah. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. The chicks love us. The chicks love us. They Jimmy fuck gets with the fucking girth. hot bitch. He always says those that that well, girth life, trying. man. That girth life is it's it's out there, man. Girth man. life. Hey, man. If there's not a girth life T-shirt, no. it doesn't like girth life, and then just fire the hole in the back. <laughs> Well, you know what's so crazy is that you you guys are about to st- launch the um, whole. Um, 
merch thing, and I think Fire in the Hole, we're going to be coming along, coming aboard over there, I guess, digital yeah, with, yeah. with that, you know, so Fuck yeah. you guys will be able to have some, some fucking uh, merch. Um, I also know one of uh, L Star is going to be making merch for us, too, Fuck you know yeah. what I mean? And, uh, you know, he, he, he's really excited about some of that stuff. He's got his own little style and all that. We're excited. We just want you guys to to have fun. And, and listen, I don't want y'all to think, like, I'm going to get in this ring when this shit do happen with Lewis. And I'm going to look at him like, my little, I'm going trying to rip his fucking nose off. I'm going to, I'm going to, how, however many teeth I have then, if I can, if I can afford to bite him without them looking, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do whatever it takes for me to win. Lewis, I heard you want to get steroids, all that <laughs> shit. Do, do whatever the fuck you want to do. I'm going to get Jack fucking Diesel. I'm going to come in and Jimmy's going to be fine. When Jimmy looks up at me, he's like, holy shit, what, what did I get myself into? Nah, I'm going. What I, did I get myself into? All I'm saying is like, I remember in Rocky Four when Rocky Balboa split Drago's face and he started to bleed. The dark-skinned nigga with the bald head that was sweating refusely. He bleeds! He bleeds! He's not a machine! He's not a machine! And once I realized, because right now, Lou, I ain't gonna lie, my nigga, my old ass, I, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm like... Yeah, how, you're how old are you? I'm 38 years old, man. You're only a year and a half older than me. When did you turn to 39? Huh? When did you birthday? June 29th. Okay, yeah, so yeah, you're a couple years older than me. Yeah, man, and, and I'm, I'm not, old as shit too, man. Come man, on, man. Like Tony, if you saw this big toenail hey, right now, you wouldn't yeah, fight me. Whatever. You wouldn't man. fight me if you looked at what was growing on my toenail. You'd be like, I ain't, right, gonna, even, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna even hold you up for a big nigga. I got cute feet, B. <laughs> for a big nigga, dog, I, I got. I, my, look at a lot of big niggas' feet and look at mine. Yeah. Pu- pu- pull up big niggas' feet. <laughs> I want to see the switch history on this yeah, computer. Sorry, that big, <laughs> big that big, that, that my my feet are cute for a big nigga, dog. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna say that when I go to um the 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 Thai the Thai people to get my feet done that they're happy to see me. Yeah. But oh, you keep you keep. I do up. my part. I gotta you know I gotta I mean? keep. I gotta keep. I've never I, had a pedicure in my life. I that's crazy, my G. You have yeah. no respect for the women, dog. Yeah. I had a facial for the first time in my entire life. <laughs> Good, Jimmy. Make the gay joke. Nah, make it's the not. gay joke. I took cosmetology. Yeah. So, I, you know, like, we was forced to do that. I know about facials and stuff like oh, yeah, that. I did. I got a facial. My, my best friend, my Yasmin, she used to give me facials and cosmetology. Yeah, she did. She, no, no, Not like that, I stupid. Know. You <laughs> crazy. No, no, no. She actually... Yasmin is who made me cool to all the other girls in school because they all thought I was just a fucking weirdo and shit, which I am, you know. Yeah. The song Creep by Radiohead best about explains you? why. It's about you. you. Yes, it does. Yeah. It does. I thought it was really funny you were on that episode, you were talking about how you were jerking off to XNXX, which is a solid website that very often you realize people don't realize. Have you guys used XNXX? It's just a blue. It looks shitty. Yes. It looks shitty. It's a blue splash page. Like, yes. What is, it? what is this? I, and the problem with it is there's no, I haven't been to Lobster Tube in a while, I just realized. Um, lobster Tube? Lobster that? Tube. That was my old go-to. I, I was YouTube, tube. and then from YouTube, YouTube, I went straight to X in that. Were you jerking off I mean, YouTube? No, not YouTube. Porn Tube. Um, por- you Porn. You Porn. You Porn. And then straight from You Porn, I went straight to X in XX. Yeah. Um, my little brother, Joel. Told me about X and X is dope, uh, and you there's scroll over right where they they go through the scene or no? Yeah, that you, was a problem with Lobster Tool is there's no scroll over. So there. you had to gamble. Oh, you know Lobster Tube as well. Oh, you Lobster had to gamble to watch the whole. Nah, I'm I like, gotta know if he's going to cream pie her because <laughs> they say it sometimes, and then I'm gonna fucking. I can't have that many clicks with I, my dick in my hand and I'm clicking. It's fucked uh, up. Nah, yeah, you got to keep your... It's a, it's, a, it's a whole dynamic that goes on. But I'm going to say this, man. XNX and discovering hood amateur porn? Hmm. <sighs> My man, I've never been so inspired in my life. But is it does it is it annoying because the screen's always sideways? No, nah, not nah, because they get different. Ang- Yo, my nigga, I saw a nigga get his dicked in the staircase. Um, 
And I, I ain't gonna lie, son. This bitch was necking him out crazy, and she had on a fitted Knicks hat. Okay, and I like all it. I could think was, this bitch is old Knicks. Anthony Mason, Patrick Ewan, yeah. Charles Oakley. She out here sitting down on these dirty steps <laughs> in her juicy velour outfit. Yeah. Are you crazy? I need a bitch like that, B. Can I tell you what the probably the the only true there's a few, I'm sure, but the only real benefit to being black over being white is like not the the, the biggest one I should say. What's that? It's being able to really enjoy black porn like black on white porn because mm. you guys you like i i can't i'm, I'm why do you I'm always Hispanic. speak like you guys nigga no, 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 you, no, no, I'm you not white. black you no, no i'm oh. saying those guys oh, oh yeah i'm I, you know they so black to me nigga it don't make a difference and i'm af i'm i'm afro puerto rican okay <laughs> so I, I see the world from both perspectives okay you guys don't even know but you guys and i know what's going on with them because i can't watch black porn because i can't put myself there like mentally i can't be that big black dick that girth I, yeah. yeah that girth life that shit that these guys you're the even mouth. further away pigment wise so you am i wrong or am i right like you can't really enjoy a black guy fucking unless you're watching <laughs> cuck porn where it's a black guy fucking a chick in front of and i can watch that and i don't want to get cucked but i psychologically can watch a black guy fuck a white chick in front of a white guy and that will turn me on i think that makes me a rapist i'm pretty sure because i'm not I, I don't want my girl to do that at all but it's the, the aggression and the anger and the sadness of the whole thing i'm just like i gotta come <laughs> That's dark, right? That's pretty dark. I love it, though. And this it's is true. therapy. It's true. And trust me, there's a nigga out here that is as sick as you, like, yes, I know what he's talking about. You want to know a trick that I've talked about this on Skanks before, but Jimmy, this will change your life, okay? And they've, they have documentaries now, so it makes it easier. But I used I, I was I was doing this shit before there was even porn documentaries. There's like, there's a good one called uh, Hot Girls Wanted on Netflix. Mm hmm. But um, you don't have to watch the documentaries. You can just find interviews of porn stars that have retired from porn. And what they'll do is they'll be describing how porn has ruined their life. Okay? Like, they're like, I quit, I quit from porn because I was, you know, I was beaten on set. I was abused. I was pressured and all these things. I don't want to do any these sad interviews, these fucked up interviews where they're talking to these radio hosts. So what I will do is I will find uh, that porn star and I will find the videos of her getting fucked and I'll use the audio track of her talking about what a horrible experience it was, and I jerk off to that. Oh, my God. Sometimes you can find the specific scenes they're describing. Some dark shit. So this is why I could also beat you in a fight. You can't go <laughs> as dark as I can go, Jimmy. The places I can go mentally and the things I can do to my own body, I don't think you're ready for it, but we'll see what happens. Listen. Listen, I, I, you know, um, <laughs> niggas know, you know, I, 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 I don't know if this is going to go out. I, like, I think we might drop this ASAP. Or I don't know yeah. if this is Wednesday. I don't know. We might do another episode for Wednesday. But the reason why this had to get done is because all of the phone calls I was getting. Of course, you guys always know you can call me when you have questions. 917-792-1593. I'm here, you know, fucking honorable pres <laughs> presiding. The underground uh, judge. Um, you should just get a, a fucking 900 number and make it an advice line, so at least you get paid while they ask you for advice. No, I don't. I don't a couple yeah. dollars a minute, who cares? Uh, fucking, they, 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 you know, they, they, niggas is fucking with the Patreon, and that's, a, that's, that's, that's super true. dope. I, I, you know, I didn't even, dude, we just found out that we're doing better than who? Well, how? Uh, Rich Voss. Wow. Yeah. Voss. You passed Voss. That's a, that's a, uh, wow. That's, what's the name of their podcast? Uh, what is it, G-Man? Uh, my wife hates my me. My wife hates me, yeah. Wow, dude. And that, and, and, you know, Rich Voss is the big bro. You know, I, I told, I told the story about how I, I bombed two times in the same set after he performed when I was 16 years old. <laughs> I told that story on this show before. Uh, yeah. So it, you know, um, not that we're, we're glorifying his, you know, fall or us, you know, anything like that. We're just thankful that people are the landmarks, and it's like you, somebody a comic you respect. Yeah, that you're yeah. Like, oh shit, my podcast is doing. And you know, can I know? Can I tell the truth? Yeah, dude, please. Off the record, I mean, it's on the record. I know how well his podcast does because I've worked with that network uh, with like ad sales and doing various things. 
so I know the 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 type of numbers his podcast has. Not necessarily, you know, specifically, but I know. I, I have an idea. And um, the fact that you guys have a larger Patreon um, where your total downloads, if I had a guess, aren't anywhere near as much as the total downloads, shows you how passionate your fan base is and how hardcore you guys are and, and how you're doing this right. Because it's it's just uh, it's an, it's a percentage, right? It's one out of however many people that are listening to the show or subscribing to your Patreon. I know this side very well. I know the subscription side very well. So you're getting a much larger percentage of people that are going, I love what you're doing and I want to pay you for it and support you. Um, so it's, that's really valuable to know and just, you know, it's, it's a big deal. That's a huge thing. So Dude, even, it, more, even more than you think on the surface, is that what I read from that is a, a much bigger deal. Uh, and, and you keep... To, you know, you were definitely when you explained to me about, you know, how you're going to have a core base of people that these are the, the, your maniacs that's going to show up, rain, yeah. sleet, or snow, and stuff like that. You, that that that's a fact, man. Because a lot of the family members that we talk to on the phone, you know, that I speak with, uh, G Money, he happens to be around a lot of times when I get some of these phone yeah. calls, man. And, I've been uh, here. You got two of them. I've been with you today. You, you know, yeah, you, you know. So yeah. it's I I I I really I really am just humbled to be in this position. I am. I'm really honored. That people, because they don't know, it's helping me more than they think that I'm helping them. Yeah, it's it's really giving me the validation, doggy. It's the most. That, it is the most therapeutic, most fucking it, validation. You're, it, it shows you you're on the right path. You know what I'm saying? That you're yeah. doing the right fucking thing. And um, yeah, dude. You look. I, I have my own platform at Gas Digital. Patreon's a great platform that enables guys to go out there and not have to fucking work for the man and not have to bow down to somebody else and you what you've done is great if you're listening to the show and you're not subscribed to the patreon what the fuck's wrong is it five bucks a month yeah it's everything is everything nothing. and we just throw up content we yeah. do dope ass interviews and we just keep content up jimmy jimmy is one of the most motivated people i know and if you guys <laughs> grow that out he will grow that side out i'm telling you right now you know all bullshit aside like that the people listening now, you guys are the most important. That's the it's the most the first core people that come in that listen to you at the early stages. Yeah, they're the ones who fucking get it. It's not about a, a popularity contest. They didn't hear about it from some fucking blog or whatever mm-hmm, else. Mm-hmm. They got it on the, you know it's punk rock and it's cool to be on the inside very early on. And I always appreciate the guys that were. I mean, did I? Dude, uh, fucking Matty Jester Skulls, who at this point hosts a show with Shannon, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. One of my first real fans, like put, you know, hammer fisting, old school, seven, eight years ago. Love that fucking podcast. Uh, fucking, uh, I, 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 can, I, can name a, I can name like a bunch of them that are just fucking cats that are fucking dope. Like just fucking really cool cats that have supported, that were there way fucking early. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And those are the most important people. Those are the ones that I'll always fucking get into shows for free. Those are the ones that I'll always fucking try to hook them up with whatever I can hook them up with. So, Uh, And and they know we got them over here. Like, at some point, you know, shit may get crazy where the shit go up, but we already said it. And I'm I'm a man of my word. The first thousand... It will always be five dollars for them. Yeah, we keep a record of everyone that signed in. We got their names. That thousand, like when this shit get crazy, when the main events start coming up with us. Oh yeah, yeah, the Patreon will bump up and because those, yeah. niggas wants to see what the fuck is gonna go on. Yeah, and there's gonna be some real shit going on. I, you know, ain't gonna be no gimmicks. I'm not with the gimmick shit. You already know that. I just want you to mean everything. You, you look say. really frail right now. That's weird. You said anyway. what? Anyway, uh, all right. Keep talking that frail shit. <laughs> Listen, um, everyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tuned in. I remember. I, uh, I was gonna just say, dude. I, the first time I saw somebody put in their Twitter profile, F- Luis J Gomez fan, it was like, "Are you uh, K Vazi? K Vazi from Florida? That motherfucker still comes out to everything. Skankfest. I, but I give him free tickets every year to Skankfest because he's a fucking man. He's yes. the ma- the first guy to ever. Pu- I remember just being like, "Wow!" I, I was going on Bobby Kelly's podcast regularly. That was uh, it. That will be our Ken. That will be our Ken. Ken. Ken's uh, the fucking man. Is yeah. that Kenny Lofgren? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Teddy. <laughs> fucking shout out, dude. Doggy, let me tell you something. Kenny Lofgren, <laughs> nigga. Kenny Lofgren picked me up from the airport. <laughs> 
and would drive me around to the comedy club. We got fucking Seattle dogs. Kenny Lofgren knows what the fuck's up. Me and Kenny Lofgren oh, are boys to this day. That's well you know, hard. Kenny Lofgren, he's one of the best comedy fans in the world, okay? He drove to- He's not a fan over here. He's family. family. He drove from fucking Seattle down to LA to fucking- He came to Skankfest. <laughs> Dougie, well, Kenny right. Lofgren is the fucking man. And he did. He drove me. I used to do a, a, a Periscope thing called Driving Lewis. Yeah. And I just tweeted out. I was like, who wants to pick me up from the airport? And they were, they, me and you were the same type of guy, Jim. And he showed up, and I was like, what's up? And we we went to, it wasn't Kenny. It was a different cat. Um, oh, what the fuck's his name? <laughs> Jay Sheck. Jay Sheck picked me up, and I, I was pitching this as an idea to Comedy Central. To uh, or MTV, like driving, you drive a celebrity around, you pick them up from the airport, and you go and do something in your hometown with a, a different celebrity. That was the uh-huh. idea. And I was on Periscope doing it, and that was my big pitch. I was like, I'm going to show them Much that better. I'm doing it. Then I was like, I did it. I was like, the guy's here right now. And then they were like, you should see in the face. They were like, there's some random sh- strange man in the, the lobby right now. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, he's out there right now. They were like, yeah, uh, you're going to have to leave right now. <laughs> they were not down with the idea at all. It was uncomfortable. Hey, yo, we got actually something that we do on a Patreon. Uh, it's, it, we're, we're, we're releasing it. It's called Road Raging with Jimmy Martinez. <laughs> the first oh, one's yeah. fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I but, love it. Uh, listen, man. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, um, we do know that the, the family is the core of everything that we do here. And we really appreciate you guys. I just want you guys out there that's listening especially in Twitter world, all right, man? Don't get too crazy with this shit. A lot of this shit for niggas, like, no, I was dead serious, and a lot of you niggas know, you know, and Lewis, I apologize for not understanding the game how I was supposed to understand it. Last thing I want to do is offend you and your staff over there because... Once again, Lou, you help make And they're all fans the of yours. That's the other thing. Shannon, that was the one she, she said. She was like, I booked Jimmy on the show. I love Jimmy. So that that's the thing where I'm going, like, these are people that are going to, we can always have a conversation. We we know each other's phone numbers. You know their phone. It's as simple as that. Even if you are like, yo, I'm fucking mad. Just call me. It's simple as that. Like, we don't have to make it a bigger thing than it is. And, you, and you know? that was my fault because the last thing I want anybody out there to do because, come on, man. Y'all all family members of all the shows, man. Y'all fuck with all of us. Y'all, we're all characters and you're fuck. We're all avatars for you guys in, the, in your world, man. So don't, don't, don't get too crazy with it. This is this is my brother. I love him to death. Like I really, really love him. It's very weak like, handshake. Motherfucking Lewis very- used to book me when <laughs> niggas wasn't booking me at yeah. Stand Up New York. That yeah. whole ass They're comedy still. club. <laughs> that bitch ass comedy oh, club. Shit. I got no problem um, with you. I have no problem with you twice a month, guys. Yeah. The, the, 28 days a month that you can go yeah, suck my it, dick. Yeah. Literally 28 days a month that club can suck my dick. That's the way that every comic <laughs> feels. And this is the truth. So you got there. And that you know it as well. So what? Uh, you, you know. They're it, the worst. Anybody who doesn't book you, they can go fuck themselves. That's just the way it Facts. is. Facts. Sorry. Facts. If you're not so, helping me, then exactly, I'm not helping you. Exactly. And fuck you. Yeah. You know what I mean? But what I'm telling y'all is keep supporting Gas Digital. Keep supporting motherfucking legions of skanks. All my motherfucking real ass dudes out there, y'all know what to do. Support that real ass dude podcast. Firing squad. Y'all already know what it is. Thank y'all for holding me the fuck down. Keeping that motherfucking shit legit. And motherfucking Team Rattlesteak. Thank y'all for motherfucking showing me your heart, man, and and riding out with Lewis and making sure that, you know, shit was copacetic, man. I really appreciate y'all. Shannon, fucking love you. Harrington, you bitch made, but listen, my G, you good. Justin Silverman, you still a hoe. We're going to find you. You still a hoe, B. But you moist. So you have no choice. You a Twinkie nigga, soft in the middle. You sweet. You're delicious. Go walk those dogs, B. I'm one with it. Fire in the hole and we out. This nigga Lewis right here. Nigga want to dress like a motherfucking roadie. 
so motherfucking bad. All right, go on with it. All right, y'all, y'all already know. One time for your mind, let it go.